Would you please stand for the word? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Tonight we're going to read from Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20. And I want to talk to you tonight about authority. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Let us pray. Our Father, tonight we thank you for your word that lives and abides forever. We pray that your word will get into our heart and that the confirmation of your word will be signs, wonders, and miracles shall follow. In Jesus' name. And everybody shouted. Amen. Now before you see to turn around to somebody and say, please, tonight is my night. There were three key statements in our reading tonight. Number one, verse 18, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Number two, verse 19, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. And number three, verse 20, I am with you always. George Barner, a church growth analyst, did a survey and he asked three questions and the responses are rather astounding. Number one, how many people could quote John 3.16? 53% of church people could not do it. 75% of non-church people could not do it. We expect that. Number two, what does the word gospel mean? 40% of church people did not know. 63% of non-church people did not know. In case you don't know, it means the good news of Jesus Christ. Thank God. And number three, do you know what the Great Commission is? Wow, watch this. 81% of church attenders did not know. 91% of non-church people did not know. The Great Commission is two passages of Scripture. One we read tonight in Matthew 28, and then in Mark chapter 16, verses 15 to 20, and I don't know if it's up there or not, but you can read it with me. Mark 16, 15 to 20. Matthew, Mark. Here it is. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. How many say amen to that? Amen. There were three parts to the Great Commission. Number one, the Great Claim. Verse 18, all authority is given to me in heaven and on earth. Number two, the Great Commission, verse 19, make disciples of all nations. When he says all nations, that is the Greek word ethnos, which means all people groups. Most of us would see India as one nation, but God would see it as 3,300 people groups because there's that many dialects. 
And number three, the great comfort, I am with you always. The attitude of many Western world churches is the Great Commission has become the great omission or the great suggestion. We get involved in humanitarian aid, which is great and good, but it is also palatable to some people. Missions is evangelizing, preaching the gospel, planning churches, and discipling people. Amen. Come on, that's missions. Can you say amen? Amen. The Great Commission was released through the Great Claim. Said authority. The Greek word for authority is the word exousia. And sometimes it's translated power, but that is an incorrect translation. It is the word authority, not power. Authority comes from being delegated by a higher power of another to perform certain functions. So if you're in the armed forces, there's a higher power that tells you what to do and you go and do it. Authority brings three things. Number one, freedom. Freedom. When I was 15 years of old living in New Zealand, I was allowed to get my license, my car license. That was freedom. Anybody with me out there? That was freedom. Number two, it also brings responsibility. What I didn't realize is there were rules to adhere to. I found out in a hurry. <laughs> and number three, it releases power. And the Bible says Jesus has all authority. We don't preach the gospel just because we are called. I get asked this all over the world. Why do you preach the gospel? And they expect me to say because I'm called, but it's not. That comes further down the road. I preach the gospel because I was given the authority to go into all nations by the word of God. Can you say amen? As you were. In other words, we've been authorized by God to go into the nations and win the world to Christ. When I step into foreign nations, I'm authorized to do it. I'm authorized to do it. I have the right to do it in God. Churches want power release, signs wonders, miracles, and they seek power. But what is really needed is authority, an authority that legitimately releases power. A release of power by a person not under authority is a dangerous person. Authority releases the legitimate use of power. The fall of Adam and Eve was over an authority issue. In Genesis 1, verses 26 to 28, God said, let us make man in our image according to our image and let them have dominion. When mankind was created, they were created to have dominion over darkness, over sickness, over disease, over everything that's ungodly. First word spoken over humanity. Mankind was to rule and have dominion because they were under the authority of God. And when we're under the authority of God, we have dominion. We've been authorized to be able to say and do and receive things. Then in Genesis chapter 3 verse 1, God told mankind, has God said, or, or sorry, um, not, uh, the devil came along and said, has not God said you shall not eat of every tree in the garden? God had told them you can eat of every tree in the garden except one, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You cannot eat of that. 
And God did that to remind mankind they were still under the authority of God. And if you respect that, you live. If you disrespect that, there'll be chaos. But unfortunately, they gave in to the devil and they ate of that tree. And at that moment, man lost responsibility. He lost his freedom. Sin had come. They violated authority and entered the realm of the lack of purpose. And authority then was transferred from God to the devil because of sin. And the devil is now the authority figure over mankind. And he's known as the prince of this world. But man was, I repeat, was created to have authority over the devil. But God was not caught by surprise. And he went to the cross. And on the cross he took the sin and sickness of mankind. Let me say amen to that. And in Colossians 1 verse 13 it says, God has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of God. I want you to understand something. When you get saved, when you come to Christ, not only is your sin washed away, you were delivered out of the kingdom of darkness and translated into the kingdom of God. The word translate means to lift up, carry over, and drop down. And you and I have been dropped down in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And in the kingdom of God, there is freedom. Thank God. Come with me to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 45. Now I'm going to get into some stuff I really love. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. So the first Adam was the Adam that you and I know, Adam and Eve. Come on, talk to me. Yeah, right? But then there was a last Adam. Now just recently I was in a church and they talked about the second Adam. There's no second Adam. Because if there was a second, there could be a third and a fourth. There was a first Adam, then there was a last Adam. And the last Adam was Jesus. And when Jesus went to the cross, he finished everything the first Adam ever began. Hallelujah. So when you and I come to Christ, we come into all that the last Adam has done for us. Now come with me now to Romans chapter 5 and verse 10. Romans 5 and verse 10. Here we go. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Now the word reconciled in the Greek is a very interesting word. It actually means reconnected. Everybody say out loud, reconnected. reconnected. Shout it out loud, please. All right, now let me show you what happened. God creates Adam and Eve. Are you with me? The devil comes on the, on the, on the garden, talks to Adam and Eve, they give in to sin. And so at that moment, they disconnected the entire universe from everything that God had created for them. Come on, are you with me? Some are going, yeah, yeah, and others are going, huh? <laughs> yeah, we were disconnected. That's why if you go out and try to do good and live a good life, it doesn't work spiritually because you're still disconnected. You're now just disconnected in a nice way. <laughs> so
So up here is a whole lot of chords. And I'm sure our music leader wouldn't want me to mess with them. But I'm tempted. <laughs> but I won't. But if I was to unplug these chords, I have disconnected everything that's musical from the power supply. Simple? Now, Jesus goes to the cross. And when he's on the cross, he takes the sin and the sickness of mankind upon himself. Are you with me? But something else happened. The spirit of Jesus came down off the cross, went down into hell, and conquered death and hell right there in the devil's territory. Come on, hallelujah. And Jesus came out waving the keys of hell and death triumphantly. And that means from that moment on, when you and I open up our hearts, make a choice, make a decision, and invite Jesus into us, now something happens. We get reconnected back into the power supply that the first Adam disconnected us from. Now we're reconnected into life. We're reconnected into joy. We're reconnected into health. We're reconnected into finances. We're reconnected into overcoming and conquering. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. We've been reconnected. Oh, I love that. My favorite subject in scripture is the atonement. I love it. Man, I love it. And any time I preach about this, I got to watch what I do because I can take off. Because <laughs> I love it so much. But we've been reconnected, reconciled. Can you say amen? amen? And at that moment, Jesus removed us from the authority of the devil and transferred us into his kingdom, there was an amazing exchange of authority. Come on, hallelujah. Jesus is the freest man of all creation. And as a result, there is an incredible release of power through his life. Why? Because Jesus understood authority and it is something if I might say this we are weak on in the western world church watch this firstly we cannot be an authority unless we're under authority all right God flows through authority. That also means we have responsibility. So you remember, Jesus is a young boy. His parents have been celebrating the feasts and they're heading home. And they discover that their son, natural son, Jesus, is not with them. So then they have to turn around and go back to find him. Now, in those days, they walked or rode a camel. Today, we ride an automobile. It really gets up my nose if I take off somewhere and discover I've left something at home and I've got to turn around and go back home to get it. I am not excited about that. I'm not a happy camper. Anybody with me? No, no I'm not. I could even be a little bit carnal. Some of you going out there, not me, not me. You are lying. <laughs> so I imagine this couple is not exactly happy. 
because they got to go a long way home, back to find them. When they ultimately find him, he's in the temple asking and answering questions of the religious leaders. He's a boy. He's a boy. I called my granddaughter last week. I said, how was school? Oh, I was good. Just like that. I said, did you learn anything? She said, no. I said, then you probably should be teaching the class. Yes. <laughs> I don't know where she got that from. <laughs> So they take him home. I want you to, here's what I want you to watch. Jesus, as a boy, says, I am about my father's business. The religious leaders probably thought he was talking about carpentry. But he wasn't talking about that. But here's the thing. He stayed at home until he was 30 years of age, placing himself under the authority of his parents, who even though they knew who he was going to be, didn't understand everything that pertained to it. Come on, are you with me? And he stayed there, submitting himself to their authority. And then he went out, sent out. The trouble today is we have too many people that went out and not enough people that have been sent out. And when you're sent out, you go out under the authority of the local house and the local pastor, and that's when the apostolic kicks in. I get this all over the world. Pastor Al, I'm leaving my church. Why? Pastor doesn't understand the call on me. How do you know? Well, if he did, he, I would have been sent out already. I'm listening to you. I know why you haven't been sent out. <laughs> I just tell him, hey, I'm old enough, I've got my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I just tell him, man. I don't want him to go away saying, what does Al mean? No, you got it, man. The reason you haven't been sent out is because you're not ready to be sent out. And if you were ready, God would have opened the door. So don't force it open because if you go out before you're sent out, you will end up a catastrophe. It's not dictatorship. Kathy and I have deliberately or did deliberately place ourselves under the authority of our pastor. We went and told him, we put ourselves under your authority. We will listen to you. We will pay attention to you. And even if we disagree with you, we're not leaving. Come on, hallelujah. And he looked at me and said, do you think I'll make a mistake? I said, I don't think I know. <laughs> You're not God, and neither am I. And I'm smart enough to know that when I think you might have made a mistake, I might be making the mistake. <laughs> See, power released is everything to do with authority. Matthew's gospel, the main theme is about authority. When Jesus taught in Matthew, the people were blown away and they said, he taught them as one having authority. I'm jumping through this to save time. Worship releases power in the church. Why? Because when we raise our hands to God, we are surrendering to God and we're placing ourselves under authority. Then the power of God can be released.
Because of the cross, we've been delivered from the authority of the kingdom of darkness. And we've been translated into the authority of the kingdom of God. And that's why the Bible says in Luke 10, 19, we are given authority. I give you exousia, power, authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. He wasn't talking about the animal kingdom. He's talking about devils and demons. Come on, hallelujah. They are under our feet. We can now fulfill the great commission because we have been given the authority, we've been authorized to do it. And we, we, when we come to minister to you tonight to bring healing to your sickness or disease, please understand, it is not me or anybody else, it is Jesus. But also understand, we've been authorized to do it. I've been authorized to say, in the name of Jesus, sickness go. I've been authorized to say, in the name of Jesus, disease and pain leave. Come on, hallelujah. It's not a whim, it's not a hope. We've been authorized to do it. All of heaven is backing us up. Because I've been reconnected. Oh, I love that. Everybody say reconnected again. Reconnected. No, you didn't get us. It say reconnected again. Reconnected again. <laughs> We've been reconnected, reconnected. Now the power flows through us. Come on, hallelujah. 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 I discovered very quickly, I'm not a good handyman. Let me rephrase that. I'm a very poor handyman. Thank God for Kathy. Any, any man out there like me? Yeah, the hands are going up all over the place. Some of you are wannabes. <laughs> I discovered this. When you're going to change a light bulb, turn the main power off. Come on, are you hearing me? Because you're standing on a ladder or a chair, as it is in my case. Come out. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Just joking, just joking. <laughs> and you unscrew the light bulb and you inadvertently touch. Dear God, it's a miracle I'm alive. <laughs> and my wife goes, what are you doing on the floor? <laughs> You're supposed to be putting a light bulb in. Well, I got the light bulb out. but I touched something. She said, didn't you turn it off? Oh, I didn't know I had to do that. So I had to go disconnect it. Get up there, put the light bulb in like I know what I'm doing. Go back and reconnect the power, turn the switch on, and there's light. Come on, are you hearing me? Yeah. 